unprecedented, bandied about a lot in the last 12 months. So it's fitting that Michigan State and Michigan meet for an unprecedented third time in the same season and with a berth in the Big Ten Tournament semifinal on the line. Hello from a glorious day in Ann Arbor. My goodness, Chris Fosters and Chris Doran, delighted to be with you. Before we delve into the specifics of this matchup, Chris, we'll look at the Big Ten Tournament bracket brought to you by Discover. Four matchups today, a glorious day for soccer. Positively, and if you're a Penn State fan, looking forward to the semifinals, Jeff Cook has got the Nittany Lions humming. Let's look back at the March 23rd meeting between Michigan State and Michigan. It was much colder then, but the Spartans got things going with Nick Stone. He broke up the play as Michigan's coming out of the back, and as he makes the run into the attacking third, leaves the ball for Miller. Miller decides to play this ball across. It's cleared from the goal line and then put back away by Nick Stone. The Spartans up 1-0. Quite frankly, Chris, Michigan State dominated the first two-thirds of this game, but then Jackson Reagan came up to the forward position and got things going for the Wolverines. Yeah, the Spartans just didn't track him, and Jackson Reagan whisked this ball right to the far post. Red card in overtime on Michael Miller. That was a huge momentum swing. Yeah, it absolutely is. Now you're playing with 10 men, and you're trying to defend a long throw of, of among other things. Big ball into the box, can't be controlled. Pounced on by Buka. He's got two game winners this weekend, this season, and they're both against the Spartans. Yeah, junk goal if there ever was one, but a great meeting of the minds. Shaka Daly is trying to lead Michigan to its third straight Big Ten Tournament Championship appearance. Damon Rensing on the other side has led the Spartans to eight NCAA Tournament appearances. They meet next. Welcome back to U of M Soccer Stadium. Summer-like conditions in Ann Arbor today for this April showdown in the Big Ten Tournament between the six-seed Michigan State and the three-seed Michigan. We are underway. Great to be with you on a breezy afternoon in the southeast portion of the mid. Michigan State wrapped up this very strange regular season at four and six. They actually finished tied for fifth in the Big Ten with Rutgers, lost the tiebreaker because of the head-to-head -head results. Michigan at five, three, and one certainly had a chance, Chris, to finish with a higher seed than just third, but somewhat surprisingly, they dropped their final game of the season to Wisconsin, and it cost them. Yeah, it just didn't bring the energy to Madison to uh, finish the season on a strong note. Certainly, that's inspiration this afternoon for the Wolverines to get back on track. Michigan State playing with of inspiration as well. They won their final two games of the season to get back to four and six and certainly think that they are playing their best soccer of the season right now and anxious to erase the memory of two losses to the Wolverines in this same season and actually four straight overall. You talk about their best soccer, Chris, and really the focus is on how healthy the Spartans are at this point in the season relative to what happened in February and March. And Coach Damon Rensing really feels like having played those 10 regular season games that they have started to find a lot of chemistry, in particular in the back. Their back four, along with goalkeeper Owen Finnerty, I beg your pardon, with Hunter Morse, has really settled into the season. So we'll take a look at the starting 11 for Michigan State, and good news for Spartans fans, Chris. Farai Mutatu is back at the forward position. Only one goal this season, Chris, but he has finally found his way into the starting 11 again. He's made eight appearances, but really having him as a regular, a guy who distracts and disrupts defensive formations is important for the Spartans' success. Yeah, really impressive that despite just one goal on the season, despite missing two games and only starting in six, he was still named a second team all Big Ten player this year. And that's the respect that the conference gives a player like Farai Mutatu. They've seen the kind of damage he can do. He deserves that recognition. Michigan State with four Big Ten honorees. Hey! Conference awards just came out not that long ago and a hard collision as Mashtaba al Hasnawi got pushed into the bleachers here on a tackle by Jack Beck. Yeah, Jack Beck coming in hard on al Hasnawi and uh, that'll be a matchup that we'll watch throughout the rest of the afternoon. It's also one of the unique features of this facility, isn't it, Chris? It, it, almost a European flair with the stands right on top of you. Yeah, and the dugouts for benches, the players and the coaches actually sitting almost eye level with the surface. It's a matter of preference, I'm sure, from 
one coach to another, but this coach would not enjoy sitting almost eye level to the pitch. Nick Stone oh, fighting for it on the touchline. His teammate Will Perkins in the mix as well. We showed you the goal by Stone in the March 23rd meeting. That was in East Lansing. Of the three matchups, this is actually the first one played outdoors at Michigan's facility. Their first meeting way back in February was played at an indoor complex in Brighton. Weather wasn't quite nice enough for outdoor soccer at that point. Michigan State with the ball through the midfield, and here is Mutatu with a little bit of space. Connor George, number 13, to his left. Mutatu takes a shot, and Owen Finnerty is there for his first save of the match. The opportunities are not going to be all that plentiful for either team. We're in the postseason. The margins are very, very slim. In that sequence, Michigan State and Michigan are squared up at 3v3. I think there's got to be a little bit more sense of urgency from the Spartans when they find themselves in that numbers even situation on the attack. And kind of along those lines, Chris, what are some of your keys to the game today, especially in the early going as we're about five minutes in? Well, we talked to the coaches this week, Chris, and, and Shaka Daly talking about how the Wolverines have got to take their chances and they've got to defend well, especially on restarts. And on the other side of the ball, Damon Rensing talking about how he really wants his two forwards to be touching the ball a lot. He feels like if the front runners like Mutatu and Connor George and even when Gianni Ferry gets in, when those guys are touching the ball frequently, then we're in good shape. But if Marky Barra, the connector, if you will, Mr. Ann Arbor for the Wolverines has the ball at his feet for a majority of this contest, then the Spartans are not getting the job done. Here's Finnerty playing his position. And Matatsu sliding in there. Finnerty had to get rid of it quickly. But Marky Barra, number 23 in maize and blue, a player it was a lot of fun to watch, and you've got to keep your eyes on him at all times. Recently named the Big Ten Midfielder of the Year. And Michigan State head coach Damon Rensing told us in our coaches' call earlier this week, Chris, that he got Michigan State's vote. I mean, I think it was just about unanimous. But here's Mutatu in the box again. Beautiful move. Left-handed shot. And a save by Finnerty. Boy, Mutatu is buzzing right now. And he's going up against the defender of the year in Jackson Reagan. This is only after he gets inside on the run. Jens Hoff is there, and then the cut. Here comes Reagan on the support. Great save in the end by Finnerty. I, you know, those are the. That's the second opportunity now that the Spartans have had in the attacking third in these first eight minutes. On the corner, it's a little bit long, and. A great play made by Michigan State. Looked like that was Luke Morrell, Chris, if I'm not mistaken, to get ahead on that. So Owen Finnerty has been tested early by this Michigan State attack that has done a great job winning possession here in the first six plus minutes already. Three shots on goal. Hey. On the turnover. Here's Jackson Reagan, as Chris mentioned, the Big Ten Defender of the Year. Actually came up and played the forward position for Michigan in the second half of their last meeting against Michigan State, and that was a brilliant adjustment by Shaka Daly as it led to the equalizing goal late in the second half for Michigan. One of the unmentioned components to that tactical decision is that Shaka Daly in that situation down a goal on the road didn't necessarily leave his back line vulnerable but they did play with three in the back and um, and and that that's a door that's opened for Michigan State. They just couldn't find the traction to capitalize. There's Reagan with the play. 
And that's a great point that you mentioned, Chris, because Damon Rensing, from the Michigan State point of view, remember, they did not have Farai Mutatu in that game. He's on the ball now trying to feed Michael Miller, number 18. And Rensing said, you have a guy like Mutatu in that game, he's probably able to capitalize on a chance to go up 2-0. In the box again, the Spartans have it. And it's booted out by Ibarra, kept back in by Jack Beck. He's got a long range leg, as you can see right there, but Finnerty reads it well. What I like about this sequence is that Michigan State is mixing it up. We're not 10 minutes into this game, Chris, and Michigan State has threatened on a restart and twice on the run of play. And they've built into the box. Now Beck is showing we're not afraid to shoot from outside the box either. So you keep the goalkeeper and the defense guessing. And that's an important component to the tactical approach to the game. Jackson Reagan, the MLS draft pick on the ball, and played up to Umar Farouk Osman. Wears the captain's band on his left arm, and he's included in the Michigan starting 11, which we see right here. Big point to bring up on this graphic, Chris. Number 29, Jens Hoff, gets the start in the back line for Joel Harrison. A very experienced D-man for Michigan. They'll miss him back there. They certainly will. The Norwegian freshman gets his first start in a very important game, a showdown between Michigan and Michigan State and the right to move on in the Big Ten tournament. Jackson Reagan gets a lot of attention at the center back position, and deservedly so. But Joel Harrison described by Shaka Daly as another coach on the field. Ibarra with the cross for the Wolverines, and Austin Swike was there, elevated, but could not connect. And it's out of bounds, possession Michigan State. As good a cross as you'll see in college soccer, puts it right outside the six. No play for Hunter Morse, the goalkeeper for Michigan State. Got to finish that opportunity for the Wolverines. Morse plays it now, all the way up to midfield. Dante Morissette heads it out of bounds. Michigan ball. Expecting this to be an emotional game too, Chris. Yeah, it always is uh, when these two teams meet because the players on both rosters know each other so well. Teams separated by only about an hour's drive and guys who've played club soccer in the state of Michigan and elsewhere over the course of their young careers. There are no secrets between these two clubs. There's always going to be plenty of excitement, plenty of energy, and plenty of battle in the hearts of the players on the field. Late to the middle, and it's struck up ahead by Luke Morrell. Will Perkins after it for Michigan State. Jackson Reagan and Owen Finnerty converge on the ball for Michigan. And another challenge for Michigan State. He's a redshirt sophomore, and he has got wheels. On his run, Perkins makes his way around Umar Farouk Osman and can't quite finish the opportunity of getting to the goal line and then maybe poking it back. But really a great run corner kick coming up for the Spartans. Perkins was named Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week for the final week of the regular season. The only Spartan to take home a weekly award from the Big Ten this year. And now the junior Jack Beck from DeWitt, Michigan, puts it in play. And a long corner kick out of bounds. Michigan with a goal kick now. We talk about not missing out on chances in a game like this where your season's on the line and the chance to advance to the semifinals on Wednesday is sitting there in front of you. A corner kick is one of those chances. That's a restart in the attacking third. It can result uh, from something directly or it can yield or lend itself to something on the second ball. So Michigan State Jack Beck has a great service. He's got to pull that back a little bit, make it more threatening next time out. And you know Michigan's 
extra aware of corner kicks right now. Coming off that regular season loss to Wisconsin to end the regular season, the Badgers scored two goals on corner kicks as they rallied twice to tie and eventually win the game 3-2. to two. It was just not a clean game in a lot of fronts for Michigan and Shaka Daly. What did, what did coach tell us yesterday, Chris, that eight of the ten goals they gave up this year, the Wolverines can only hold themselves responsible. Two of the goals, yeah, probably extra special effort from the opponent, but those other eight really based on errors that could that need to be cleaned up uh, by the Wolverines. And this is a team, especially Michigan, that takes a lot of pride in its defense and limiting goals by the opponent. Shaka Daly once told us that allowing one goal in a game is bad enough. When you allow two goals, it's like the world is going to end in Ann Arbor. And Michigan gave up three to a last place Wisconsin team to close out the regular season. And it's a defense that's been tested already today by an aggressive Michigan State attack as it's touched out of bounds by Anyaki Rodriguez, the midfielder. Michigan runs is somewhat of a unique formation, Chris. They they consider Rodriguez a false nine. Yeah, in this um, in this system of play, what Coach Shaka Daly wants is he wants to control the ball, and so he uses Rodriguez on the lineup. It looks like he's standing up there at the top of the attack by himself, but in fact he withdraws, holds the ball, and then they dish it out to the flanks. And those flank players and Kevin Buka and Bryce Blevins are responsible for five of the goals scored by Michigan this year. Rodriguez is only for his work got one goal but his his purpose is to draw a center back out and away and create space behind him so the other guys could do the work. Into the box and headed out by Morissette of Michigan State. Mutatu with a pass to Connor George. Played wide to Perkins. Something could be brewing here for Michigan State. Here's Louis Sala with a shot behind goal. Luis Sala loves to tuck in. You can see how tight he is in that sequence. He's inside. He's got Osman bothered. And then the attack by Perkins where he can lay it forward. And Sala lets one fly. He hit that really, really well, Chris. If he gets an opportunity to put it on frame, that'll be a big-time test for goalkeeper Owen Finnerty. Finnerty has had some great battles against Michigan State this season. Michigan State snapped a 312-minute shutout streak for Finnerty earlier this year. Finnerty also has a shutout against the Spartans. On the corner, Michigan State wants a call in the box as it appeared Luke Morrell got tangled up and maybe even dragged down in the box. Big ball where Beck is looking for that far post, and yeah, Jens Hoff gets a little physical with Morrell. No whistle coming, incidental contact. Hoff now on defense again for Michigan at midfield, again taking the starting position from the injured Joel Harrison, who Michigan hopes to have available for the Big Ten semifinal on Wednesday if it comes to that. First team all Big Ten defender Joel Harrison anchoring the center back position along with Jackson Reagan, who is named Big Ten Defender of the Year. Both these teams chalked with talent. Michigan State with four all Big Ten players as well. Chris, in some ways, I think this first half is, is mimicking the first half of the March 23rd showdown. It, it's Michigan State really controlling possession. Boy, Chris, I'll tell you, that's a that's a great observation. And by the way, with this great shot, you can see the 4-1-4-1 system that Michigan is playing. Defending out of that is a really easy way to snuff out buildup for Michigan State. Michigan finally with a clear. Ball out of bounds, and Stone throws it back to his keeper, Hunter Morse. So far, what I see from Michigan State, and this is certainly in possession, but mostly in transition as they're getting numbers forward. I think the 
the system of play right now for Michigan State is causing problems for the Michigan personnel. And what I mean by that is, for example, for Ryan Matatu, now is not only dealing with Sala on the inside, but he's also having to deal with Perkins, who appears willing to come forward and really attack that right flank. The second piece is sometimes you take for granted defensive communication when you have a guy like Joel Harrison playing alongside Jackson Reagan for Michigan. Things get cleaned up and they never get talked about. The mess gets cleaned up. You need, with Jens Hoff in there, you need more communication. You have to actually err on the side of saying too much. And some of that may not be getting taken care of right now with the way Michigan State is building from the midfield. Watch it side. Here comes Kevin Lacrosse. Buka from the left wing. Again. Perkins got a leg on it for Michigan State. Buka on the ricochet, long Let's shot, go. and Morris knew it was off frame. So Buka is one of two inverted midfielders where he plays on the left-hand side, but he's a right-footed player. And so what he is supposed to be doing is exactly what he just demonstrated. He's going to get that ball, and he's going to cut inside, put that ball on his right foot, and just square it up on frame. Buka has enjoyed a breakout season. Junior from Rochester, Michigan. Two goals, three assists on the year. As Michigan State with a 5-1 advantage in shots on the three seed of the Big Ten tournament, the Michigan Wolverines. One of four Big Ten quarterfinal matchups today. We already know Penn State is through to the semifinal. Which of these teams will join them? Well, Michigan State went on the road and played Penn State in the regular season. Michigan and Penn State had a scheduled game this season, and it was canceled. And so it would be interesting to see a Michigan and Penn State matchup for the first time this year on Wednesday night in the semifinal. But they've got a lot of work to do to get past this Spartan squad. A healthy team, and as you mentioned, and I think you, we're seeing it, the confidence has built in the last two victories for the Spartans. Absolutely. Here's Mutatu with a touch back. Now Michael Miller tried to re-team Mutatu, and there was just too much blue in the top of the box. Dante Morissette plays it back to Morrell. Played all the way down, and Miller was out of bounds. Well, I like the idea that Michigan State's bringing some depth, I'm sorry, some width, with Beck identifying Miller on the flank. I feel like they're getting just a little too narrow in the last few minutes on the attack. They've really got to spread the field a little bit. When you pack it in, you make it much easier for the defense to do their job. And so if you make the field wider and move the ball faster, you'll actually make it more challenging for the defense that, as I mentioned, has got a really experienced and talented guy like Jackson Reagan, but a first-time starter in Jens Hoff. So, you know, expose him a little bit. Make him appear to be indecisive. Make him think twice about things. It's not to say, you know, he's got great experience in Norway. I mean, his club resume is fantastic. He captained his club team for several years, but, but still, in this environment, you really have to make him think twice about things. Well, one thing Shaka Daly said about the pleasure in coaching players like Jackson Reagan and Joel Harrison is that you don't really have to say anything to them anymore. They know exactly what the coach wants them to execute on the field. There's Jackson Reagan right there. And, and now that dynamic has been taken away or at least diminished to the point that I thought you brought up very well, Chris. You know, some things that are taken for granted from a communication perspective maybe need to be explained out again with a, a new guy at the center back position in Yen Song. Jack Zuge plays it up to midfield. Michigan State with some real estate here. Here's Mutatu on the pass from Miller. Mutatu, great poke check by Jackson Reagan. 
Plays it back into the corner. Farouk Usman is after it, and he strikes it along the sideline. It stays in bounds, and here's Marky Barra. Boy, he has not been much of a factor so far in this game, Chris, and he picks up the foul there. Well, we've seen time and again that Luke Morrell has no problem getting into a tangle. <laughs> and Ibarra goes way outside and pulls the center back with him. And Morrell has probably got a bit of a, a special assignment in today's approach to the game for the Spartans, and that is to keep an eye on Ibarra, because Ibarra is going to connect the back to the front and make things happen in the, in the final third for the Wolverines. Quinn Rogers with the free kick. A lot of leg on that one. And let's take a look at the tournament bracket. Once again, brought to you by Discover. Indiana Northwestern is the nightcap today. We mentioned Penn State top to Ohio State 3-1. to one. Maryland and Rutgers scoreless in the second half. That's an intriguing matchup. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, you know, the top four teams, really no big surprise there. And uh, Maryland didn't play last week. They had a week off uh, headed into the last weekend of the regular season. So, you know, the preparation for Rutgers was on the drawing board early. And uh, Rutgers giving them everything they've got. Maryland's been hampered by injuries. So, too, is Rutgers. Look at Mutatu on the rebound. Farouk Usman is there. Great play by Michigan's defense to hold firm, but they're not out of the woods yet. Will Perkins has it taken away by Buka. Brilliant maneuver. And Umar Farouk Osman plays it up. High kick. Well, it's just great open defending, open play defending by Kevin Buka coming all the way back with Perkins in the overlapping run. Buka comes around. Hey, Takes his wallet and the ball in an open field. Very dangerous spot to top of the 18. You don't want to make a mistake. Does a great job there. Hey, hey, hey. Took his wallet and the ball, away. poor guy. Right away. Kevin, on your toes, Kevin. On your toes. We've seen the leg from Jack Beck already in this Why? game. Hey, yes. Into the box. Hey, and knocked out by Jackson hey, Reagan. I tell you what, I think you were onto something there, Chris. Another physical play by Luke Morrell in the box there. He's challenging, he's challenging Jens Hoff. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Watch Luke Morrell and Jens Hoff comes up. Hoff's got hands all over his chest, takes him down. And at some point, the referees are going to start communicating. Hey, are we missing something here? Do we need to keep an eye on something? Luke Morell is not going to back down. Jens Hoff so far up to the task. Corner is played short. Sala on the feet into the box. There was Hoff again tangled up with Morell and finally a whistle. I tell you what, if nothing else, I think Morell is going to start to get under Michigan's skin. Well, he, he just might. I mean, he has watched this from the southern part of the state for a couple of years. He's an Oakland transfer, okay? He comes to Michigan State after a couple of years, gets on the field as a starter, as a center back, has done a phenomenal job for Michigan State. He knows from afar what the battle is like between the Michigan kids and the Michigan State kids, and now he's living it. And that was a, a big part of, in Damon Rensing's eyes, why Michigan State has gotten better throughout the season. It was a, at the very least, revamped, if not altogether restructured back four for Michigan State at the start of the season. And with 10 games to sort of hash things out, the communication has got better and it's turned into a, a well-functioning unit. Yeah. So all they need is games and, and the chemistry, the communication, the understanding that they have. That's a great ball by Beck. Oh. Truly unfortunate touch by Connor George, but what a ball. Breaking the lines with this lovely pass. And all, all Connor George has to do is hold that ball for a moment. That's all he has to do and wait for everyone to come in underneath him and help with combination play and build into the attacking half of the field. Just a misconnection for Michigan State, unfortunately. And Michigan trying to capitalize as Buka is dragged down and then he got kicked in the back of the head. That looked like it hurt. Trainer, trainer. 
Well, this will be a mandatory visit from the athletic trainer, but for now, I think Luke Morell is going to have to be really careful. He's getting sucked outside as a center back, helping out when Perkins gets forward, and he's getting a little too physical in spots where he really doesn't have to. He's attracting a lot of attention from the officials right now, and I think Morell's got to be careful. They need him in the back line to survive this one and move on to Wednesday. He talks things over with Damon Rensing. Michigan State grad himself in his 12th season. Led the Spartans to the 2018 College Cup, as you'll remember, Chris. That was Michigan State's first appearance in the College Cup in 50 years. 2018 wasn't all that long ago. Good to see Puka back up on his feet. Uh, 2018 was a was an odd one because they only scored one goal in their last four games of that season. They exited the Big Ten tournament early that year and took an extra week to get prepared for the NCAA tournament. They then went on to win four straight, got to the College Cup semi, lost to Akron 5-1, to one, but that, as you said, was MSU's first trip in a long time, and it was Damon Rensing's first trip as the head coach of the Spartans. Free kick here for Mark Ibarra. Again, Big Ten midfielder of the year, Mr. Ann Arbor, as Chris Doran described. Out of Skyline High School. Good ball. Michigan State was there. Connor George got a header on it. Farouk Osman is there to play it all the way back to Owen Finnerty. Even though we saw Kevin Buka get back to his feet, Derek Broche is into the game. Off the bench for Shaka Daly. Broche, a junior from Novi, Michigan, Greater Detroit. And then seven can re-enter, and that'll be seven. Push side, stone, left shoulder. Quinn Rogers. In it goes, and Ibarra into the corner. Farouk Osman Why? off a deflection. Roche yes. right into the game and a save made by Morse with a player right on his doorstep. This is a great sequence from Michigan. Ibarra gets forward. He keeps that ball in play, gets it back to Umar Farouk Osman. And Broche has really done well to find space between the two central defenders of the central back and the outside back. Space and time, but not enough contact on that ball to make it dangerous. Broche always wears those neon-colored cleats. He's an easy player to pick out. <laughs> that was also Cameron Martin, who was trying to slide in and poke it past Morse on a potential rebound that just never happened. Credit Morse, the Michigan State netminder, for that. There's Broche. Got to be ready when, you're, when your number is called off the bench, Chris. He came in and made something happen right away. Yeah, being prepared mentally. Certainly these guys are prepared physically for this matchup. They've had training since uh, January, February to get ready. Got our referee uh, addressing the scorer's table at this point. This may be clarification on uh, on a substitution. Okay. I think I overheard that as well. On a head injury, re-entering the game, I think that may be uh, re-entering the first half, I should say. That may be the discussion that Shaka Daly is having with the referees. Can I, can I put... Can I put Buka back in? Which he would not be able to do until the second half, right? Right, but on a head injury... Uh, the question is, can he come out, get checked? Oh. If he's healthy, can he go back in? There's Buka. Our referee is Kalen Radosov. And again, this is why Buka came out of the game in the first place. He it's got not, tied up with Morell. Yeah, it's not the tackle. It's, um, it's what comes after that, the knee to the back of the head. And it's an absolutely, um, I think, efficient and accurate decision on the part of the referee to have him checked and to have him step off. 
just based on his reaction alone, I, I remember he grabbed his head. He was sort of rubbing, massaging the back of his head. I mean, he was clearly in discomfort. But Buka is back on the field right now, so that substitution question has been answered. Here's Anaki Rodriguez. And so it's Buka in. Mushtaba Al Hasnawi out. And so Derek Broch, who had the shot on goal a moment ago, is still in the game for Michigan. The idea of head injuries oh, not a handball. The uh, the discussion about head injuries in soccer has been an ongoing thing. There's Morel getting involved again, and this is after the whistle. He's got to be careful. Or maybe maybe that's a big sell by Broch. Uh, Major League Soccer, I mean, the NCAA, the Big Ten Conference, have all done a really good job in the last couple of years to really address head injuries and adjust substitution rules in accordance with the research. Major League Soccer just announced this week that they're going to allow for a head injury substitution, get that player off, and then that player can actually re-enter. Um, and you can put a player on in his stead. But then, uh, when the ch you know when the clearance is given for the player who was injured, you can put him back into the match at no penalty. Or I'm sorry, it's actually uh, you get an extra ref, you get an extra substitute. Okay. That's what it is. I, I beg your pardon. Okay. Oh God! Here's Michigan State working into the attacking third again. There's Buka, the player in question, because of that head injury, allowed to re-enter the game. Michael Miller feeds Dante Morissette. Good ball there. In the back line way forward for Michigan State right now. Down to Perkins on the wing. Connor George streaks into the box, number 13. Perkins perhaps belatedly tried to get him the ball, but Michigan had already closed the channel. This is Martin. Taken away by Jack Zuge. And Mutatu just couldn't get it back to him. Broch pushed off the ball. That was Nick Stone that time. Hey, 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 Blocked out of bounds, Michigan State ball. I tell you what, you know, the first 15 minutes felt like it was a, a pretty relaxed game in terms of the emotional intensity between these two teams. But now you're starting to see some glares exchanged, some disputed calls by the officials. I think things are picking up a little bit. That's a, that's a really great observation, Chris. I think for both of these teams going into this game, it was very, very tactical in terms of preparation. Because as you mentioned, Michigan's got to get back from... Finnerty gets it out of harm's way. That was Connor George hot on his heels. Michigan's got to get back to their ways of winning after that Wisconsin letdown. And for Michigan State, they're finally finding confidence in the health and and the uh, the abilities that their team has and how healthy their roster is right now. And this season has been a grind. Michigan State, one of just three teams to play the full 10 games. And it's not so much the number of games, but the narrow time window in which these teams had to play. Again, the season started in the final week of February. And so in, I mean, basically five to six weeks, you had to play 10 games. There was not a lot of recovery time. I think on top of that, you add to it the COVID protocol for all the squads. Sure. The concern about travel, um, test results, and everything else that goes along with it. We're not just talking about the players, we're talking about the staff as well. Rodriguez with a good maneuver around Zuge. Play to Farouk Osman on the wing. Long shot and a save by Morris. Rebound is there. Struck high into the air by Michigan State. Hoff plays it back. Martin. Here comes Michigan. Top of the box. Buka. 
Oh. Finish. And a chance by Rodriguez and a save by Morse. Michigan waking up a little bit. Starting to see the layers of attack that Michigan is bringing to the table. Guys are on the flank and they're right in the middle as well. Terrific hold-up play by Buka. He's 18 yards from the goal, but instead he looks outside, does a really nice job of finding Rodriguez. Good stuff by Umar Farouk Osman. He drops a great dangerous ball in. Second layer of attack, not quite able to connect and make things happen. That's Austin Zweig on the push forward for Michigan. Counter kick, Ibarra. Headed out by Morrell. Good play. Backed up by Quinn Rogers for Michigan. Now it's Rodriguez again. Taken away by Olu Ogunwale. Gorgeous move off the Michigan State bench. And Connor George just couldn't quite get there. Credit. Umar Farouk Osman for that. Hey, Flight, watch two. Miller dances. Hey, Mutatu. Stop, stop. Enters the box, shot, and a tip save by Finnerty. That was awfully close to the far post. I think Finnerty got a glove on that, Chris. If, if our sound is right, then I believe you are correct. Great stuff from Miller. He's got really no options to go to the opposite side and find an open player. There's no one really moving into the attack on the left-hand side, so Miller goes it alone from the right. Very low percentage shot, but incredibly dangerous. And I think we heard Finnerty's gloves touch that ball, but the referee and the assistant have ruled a goal kick. Michigan building out of the back now. Thought I heard a tip as well. See Bryce Blevins on the pitch for the first time. Number 11, he was trying to make a move, and Nick Stone streaked in and kicked it out of bounds. Mike Greeny is our audio specialist today. We're getting some great sound effects from the pitch. We appreciate that. On the corner. Morell again. Boy, he's just in the middle of everything defensively, and there was a whistle. Coach Rensing talking about how so many. Shaka Daly wants to know what the call is. Jackson Reagan was uh, piggybacking Luke Morell. That's what the call is. Uh, the. Uh, the fact that so many players will leave Michigan and they're aware of them. Sometimes the players have talked to the coaches about possibly playing, but for one reason or another, things don't work out. I think the, the, the transfer portal concept and the idea that players don't have to get married to a university, yeah, there's some downsides to that, but the upside is as a player as talented as Luke Morrell can identify that maybe now, after two years of playing D1 soccer, uh, down south that he he's actually ready to go play for Michigan State and he'd like to give it a go. Yeah, and, and Damon Rensing touched on that. The transfer players that Michigan State has, Morse comes up to make the catch. It, it, we'll take a look at this last foul quickly, Chris, first. Good stuff from Buka defensively from Zugay. I don't know. I mean, he was yeah, he was getting his body in between the player and the ball. I can understand Rensing's disappointment with that whistle. Yeah, you saw Rensing's reaction there. One thing he did say to us about transfer players on his roster is that it, it, a lot of these are Michigan natives who perhaps just want to get out of the state, play away from home for a little bit, but then for whatever reason they decide to return and it's usually players that Rensing and his staff have had their eye on for a while because they grew up in Michigan maybe even were recruited by Michigan State first time around so especially in this new era across college sports where the transfer portal has become such a, a big thing those relationships are, are really important even maintaining those relationships after high school absolutely I think 
there's some concern that the, def the defender, we got to get that ball out from the fans. It's not souvenir day here in Ann Arbor. You, you do have to throw the ball back. Although I do think that would be a great promotional concept, a keep the ball night at a soccer stadium. The ball goes in the stands. It's yours. Swank made a great play on that throw-in, but it's Morissette on it for Michigan State. And Morissette got hacked. I think Michigan wants a card here. Well, Morissette gets some contact and goes down. I, I think he did a really nice job of selling that. The two-footed leap. But, you know, you take any advantage you possibly can find. As we mentioned, the margins here are very slim in a game like this. Stone with the free kick. Tension starting to increase a little bit here in the closing minutes of the first half. Fouls pretty even between Michigan State and Michigan. Here's Miller. Does he have a cross? Jackson Reagan with the strike out of play. Close range passing here at Grayson Mercer with a shot right to Owen Finnerty. Fighting through traffic, out of bounds, Michigan State has it. Michigan, needless to say, upset about that. Mercer and Hoff is there, plays it back to Finnerty who gets it out of there. Straight up, Derek. Straight up. Straight up. And again. Back twisted down by Broach. And I think the referees had enough of Broach. Yeah, he's saying, remember, I told you the same thing down there. Broach, <laughs> remember, came into the game and uh, made an impact all, almost immediately. He had a shot on goal and then quickly has... Uh, incurred the consternation of the officials today. Which is just interesting, Chris, because for a while, Luke Morrell for Michigan State had the eyes of the officials, and it, it almost seems like the attention has been taken away by Broche for Michigan now. Yeah, I agree with you, and I, you don't really want to be that player. No. Mutatu knocks off the ball by Jens Hoff. Does Michigan State have a corner? Mutatu does a great job of really making, stretching the defense vertically. He goes to the goal line, going to give Hoff a challenge, and during the quarter kick in the process. Hey, hey, 12! 12! Finnerty sets up the defense for Michigan. Remember, they allowed two corner kick goals in the final game of the regular season to Wisconsin. Here's Jack Dunk. Line drive. And that was Jackson Reagan, the 6'6 defender, who got his head on it first. And Buka plays it up. That ball is spinning, but out of bounds. Boy, Jackson Reagan is going to look good in the Major League Soccer uniform at some point. Who knows, maybe Europe is in his future, too. He was drafted by Chicago, although he spent his youth as a member of the Seattle Sounders Club. During the summer, there's no doubt that he'll go ahead and train with the Chicago Fire. They'll decide what his future is, and then, uh, and then he'll decide whether or not he wants to come back for 
yet another season because of the pandemic adjustments that have been made by the NCAA. Jackson Reagan is a phenomenal player and has been so great for Shaka Daly. You think about the success that Coach Shaka Daly has had in the last four seasons. He's 40, 19, and 13. They're trying to get to the final game of the Big Ten tournament for the third consecutive time and win that tournament for the first time, too. Carlos Tell is on the field for Michigan number five to close out the half. That was a, a body blow taken off a of Michigan State defender there, but on a potential counter for Michigan State. Jackson Reagan with a gorgeous slide to poke it out of bounds and allow some numbers to re-enter the picture for Michigan. Reagan with some gamesmanship there. He tossed the ball onto the field to delay and get his Wolverines back into defensive shape. <laughs> Mutatu, that's Oluogunwale who throws it through the box. So, on the restart, Reagan winds up, Buka tries to chip it ahead, Blevins got bumped by Beck. Final 10 seconds. And it has become a physical first half between Michigan and Michigan State. What would you expect between these two arch rivals meeting in the Big Ten tournament for the second season in a row? The semifinals at stake. It was a fun first half. It certainly was. I think you captured it very well, Chris. Indeed, from the beginning, it was very tactical. The two teams really had to settle into their games. They're both trying to do their own thing. And then after they got comfortable with that rhythm, the chippiness kicked in. And we started to see what we know to be Michigan, Michigan State soccer. On a beautiful Saturday afternoon in Ann Arbor, Michigan and Michigan State meet in the 2021 Big Ten Tournament. No score at halftime. Both teams had chances. Chris, it really felt like Michigan State came out of the gates hot, but then Michigan had a couple of close calls later in the first half. Yeah, I thought Michigan State settled into the game tactically much better than Michigan did, or I should say at least sooner than Michigan did. And I thought there were probably some communication issues that had to be sorted out between Jens Hoff and Jackson Reagan. And eventually they went ahead and they, they sorted it out and uh, and did very well. Michigan did well, too, to get back into it and be dangerous physically. It is halftime in one of our Big Ten quarterfinal matchups, a triple header on the Big Ten Network. 45 in, 45 to go. We'll be back from Ann Arbor after this. The Big Ten Men's Soccer Tournament on the Big Ten Network is brought to you by State Farm. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Distracting us with a shot at Zingerman's Deli. Now I'm hungry. Fortunately, we were able to catch up with Damon Rensing moments ago, the Michigan State head coach. Coach, your thoughts on the first half and, and specifically, what was the emotional intensity like from your perspective sideline? First, I just thought it was a great college soccer game. I thought uh, we started off well. I think I told you guys before we wanted to get Mutatu touches, and he did. I thought he was dangerous. I thought both teams, you know, there's always some, some strong emotion, especially when a season ends most likely for whoever loses today. But for the most part, I thought it was managed pretty well. Guys executed, and looking forward to a good second half. We are too, Coach. Thanks very much for your time, and good luck in the second half. Great. Thanks for having me. Go Green. Well, there is Farai Mutatu, Chris, and yeah, he did have some chances right away in the first half. We talked about how he stretches defenses vertically. He does really well from the outside as well, but man, when he gets inside the attacking third, the boy, he, he just wants, he wants at the goal. And he does a really nice job of teeing it up, plays with both feet, gets real comfortable with physical contact. He's had plenty of it in his uh, eight games that he's played this year. He's so important, and he's also a big distraction because of the energy he brings and his activity level. Um, and when he is that distraction, the other Spartans have got to capitalize on the fact that they've got open opportunities to attack frame. 
We're underway in the second half, and Mutatu has missed some time this season, as we discussed. But it's hard to believe that he's only got one goal this season, and he fell on top of the ball there. Well, not wasting any time with the physical contact, Umar Farouk Osman getting in on a tackle. Several people want a piece of Farouk Osman just to send a message that we're keeping an eye on you in the second half. That's right. Carlos Tellez there for Michigan and Jack Beck with the free kick. Just a, one final point about Mutatu to observe going forward, Chris. Damon Rensing told us that he's still not quite 100% yet as Jackson Reagan heads that one out of harm's way for Michigan. We were only expecting to see him play 60 to 80 minutes today. Now, he went the first 45. Will he come out in the second half? We'll have to find out. Yeah, that's a really good point. And, of course, that changes things tactically, too, for Michigan State. Back into the box, and there was Reagan again. Boy, he's just a, a magnet for the ball. Going to be tough to uh, to advance with this sort of direct service in with Reagan occupying just outside the six. Here's Mutatu. Tangled up with Farouk Osman. And cleared by Michigan. It's backed up by Morissette, who's fighting for it from Brosh and wins the ball. Michael Miller after it. Beck wanted that ball. It was taken away from him and a airmailed shot over goal by Jack Zuge. Remember the Big Ten all freshman team. Jack Zuge does a really nice job. Got to be over that ball, but I love the way he's taking that chance early in the second half. His sister is a Big Ten soccer player for Nebraska. Here he is with it again to Beck and Morell instead. And then a quick whistle. No, an injured player, I beg your pardon. Dante Morissette. Real steady player, Morissette has got forward in that last sequence for Michigan State, tracked back and then gets tangled up on the outside with Austin Swike, slow to get up. Now appealing to the assistant referee that he had his jersey being tugged by Swike. Kevin, Kevin, get closer. Get closer. She goes ready. Good ball from Morris and Sala. Beck. Michigan State hangs on to it. I thought when we were talking to Damon Rensing a few moments ago, Chris, that he basically echoed your thoughts exactly. Just a really good first 45 minutes of college soccer. Well, I, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not surprised. These guys love the game. And, you know, when you're healthy, when your roster is full, and you've got guys who are willing to put the fight in, and I think both of these coaches have got that today. Um, you know, you almost you find yourself kind of getting sucked in as a fan when you're sitting on the bench. But too many tactical decisions have to be made, and at this point, the time now cut in half since the kickoff to get a result for either one of these teams in advance to Wednesday's semis. Connor George was offside. One thing I'm wondering about Connor George is, you know, when you play with two front runners, and right now Michigan State's got Connor George and Farai Mutatu, those two guys really have to stay connected. And the level of activity and energy that Mutatu brings to his role as a front runner for Michigan State can sometimes make it difficult for Connor George to stay connected with his teammate because you just never know what kind of creative run is going to come from Mutatu. You still have to be there to support him um, and, and be that, be that player for him. But, you know, Mutatu just brings so much to the game as as a front runner for Michigan State. And it may that may be part of the reason why they haven't really found much yet in finishing plays for Michigan State. So what does George really need to do then? 
Well, you know, we always coach that second runner, that second front runner, to be about 10 to 12, 15 yards max from the other player. In case he gets into trouble, has to turn his back to goal and needs a dumping point. Um, on the other hand, when your teammate is going to go to goal on the dribble and take a player on 1v1, then you have got to be making a wide run looking for that second for the service or for the second ball. And so you create separation only in that final moment when you know your, your cohort is going to go it alone. We just really probably should keep an eye on the combination between those two up top. There's George. It's turned over. And then Broche is going to get a card here. You saw this coming for a while, Chris. And Broche finally picks up the card. He collided with a Michigan State player. It looks like it was Luke Morrell, who's been on both ends of blows like that. Broche is challenging Morrell, and man, Morrell does the full 360 with the uh, forearm to the head. It is a dangerous challenge for a ball in the air. Broche is not new to the game. I mean, he had 11 starts last year, 21 appearances last season as a sophomore. A couple of starts and eight appearances this year for the Wolverines. And cards have played a huge role in this series this season between Michigan State and Michigan. Remember, there was a red card assessed to Michael Miller of Michigan State in the overtime session of the March 23rd matchup that, of course, forced Michigan State to play a man down, and Michigan went on to win that game. Michigan has won four straight in this series against Michigan State, including a win in the 2019 Big Ten Tournament. I mean, between a couple of meetings in 2019 now, an unprecedented three meetings this season, Shaka Daly and Damon Rensing have gotten to know each other quite a bit. And Damon actually called it Shaka after the pairings for the Big Ten Tournament this season and just asked him, what are we putting ourselves through? Some like tongue-in-cheek. In other news, their transportation budget is really beefed up for 2021's fall season. <laughs> Finnerty with the kick over the head of Umar Farouk Osman. Here's Osman with some real estate to Kevin Buka. Guarded by the skilled defender Will Perkins. And time for our State Farm State of Success. Chris, Michigan has been really good in the second half. Look at this. 13 goals in the second half in overtime compared to just two in the first half. And especially the number of shots, they, they become almost a volume shooting team in the second half. I, I attribute this to a couple of things. The first thing is, is coaching. Uh, tactically, you bring the players into the locker room. You have 15 minutes to give them the information they need to be successful in the second half. The other thing I attribute this to is the fact that Shaka Daly has created a culture here where these players understand and expect that kind of information and know what the expectations are of them in the second half to perform. Into the box, open goal, and Michigan State just could not poke it in. A beautiful cross by Mutatu. This is really great stuff. Look at Connor George in there on the head ball opportunity. That's the play that I'm talking about. He understands that Mutatu is going to go it along on the go it alone on the flank. Connor George makes himself available for service inside the 18. And that's a connection that you were talking about between those two, right? Inaki Rodriguez. The native of Chile. Morris said able to keep it in play. Down to Nick Stone. 
Morris said. Loses an edge. Here's Austin Swike. Top of the box. Buka. Buka makes a win. Score! Michigan goals in the second half. We certainly were. Man, oh man, great tackle on the outside. Opportunity to get that ball out to Buka, who's cutting in with his right foot locked and ready to go. Buka's got three goals this year. They're all against Michigan State. And a critical turnover that set up that possession for Michigan, right, Chris? Yeah, unfortunately, Dante Morissette appeared to have lost his footing. And that allowed the opportunity to uh, cross this ball in atop the 18. I think it, it truly caught Michigan State's defense off guard. So Kevin Buka, the Spartan Slayer, had the game winner in overtime on March 23rd. And has the first goal of this Big Ten quarterfinal match. See it out. Man, man, hard, man, hard. Up. Plenty of time left. Michigan State, just the second goal they've allowed in the last three games and a foul called there. Luca's coming from the left, right in the middle there, and he's got the right foot that he favors. Settles the ball, gets around Morrell. And all he's got to do is beat Finnerty to the far, or beat uh, Morris to the far post. And we got to give Austin Swike some love as well, Chris, for the assist. And he also had the assist on Buka's game winner in overtime the last time these two teams played together. So quite a tandem there, Swike and Buka. Move feet, move your feet. Don't, why you run by it, Carlos? Hey, stay both sides. You go this way that side. Will Perkins gets it in. Connor George. Beck plays it with the left in the direction of Morissette. He gathers. Into the box and Farouk Osman elevates. Settled by Sala. Here's Mutatu. Keep in mind, Farouk Osman is a converted midfielder playing outside back. Does a really nice job of tending to his defensive responsibilities for Michigan. Good observation, Chris. George bombs away. That's a really great sequence from Michigan State. The pass, the run through, and the opportunity from the inside. Watching Connor George make his move. Watch how George moves into this space. It's vacated, then he moves into it. He turns, settles, and very quickly lets one go. Great stuff from Michigan State. Really an, an impressive response by Michigan State. After the Michigan goal, we just saw Christian Pulselli check into the game, number 16 for Michigan. Sophomore from Pembroke, Massachusetts. He takes the place of Derek Broche, who picked up a yellow card moments before Michigan's goal. A lot of game to play. You don't want to lose a guy like Derek Broche if you move on to Wednesday. Safety first. And a great play by Morris to come up and grab that ball before things got any more difficult for him. Carlos Tellez was in the mix. This is really great decision making from Hunter Morris. He's about to have two Wolverines bear him down and his center back is going to lose the ball and he comes right out and commits all the way. You make that decision, you have to follow through and he does so. Great stuff from Morris. Michigan certainly not backing down. 
Well, they're not. And one of the things that's really helped them is they came out of the locker room committed to defense, and their defensive shape has been very, very strong from the uh, from the second whistle here in this second half. So good on Michigan, not only to keep Michigan State at bay, but also to capitalize with the scoring opportunity. Little one. Here's Nick Stone. Just two players for Damon Rensing to start every game this season. Perkins. Don't run by it. Don't run by it. Hey, Shoshi, Shoshi. Beck. Yes. George almost fell on the ball. Sala thought about pulling the trigger. Perkins on the cross. Mutatu was just not there. He was a little bit behind him. And here's Inaki Rodriguez the other way. I think he would have had the chance if he had pulled that trigger early, as you pointed out, Chris. I think he had for Rai Mutatu open. <laughs> With the amount of action we've seen in the second half, it feels like we should be more than just 14, 15 minutes in. Stone in the direction of George. Salah. Back to George. Re-entry down by Swike of Michigan. James behind. 23. Morris set in the direction of Mutatu and Finnerty scoops it up. Last chance is Michigan State built up just a moment ago. Michigan can't get the clearance. No whistle. Opportunity from the outside. Mutatu does a great job of crossing that ball. I really think the first touch by Salah should have been the cross. Here's Buka. Rodriguez was offside. Talked about how all of these Michigan front runners are really midfielders, real comfortable with the ball at their feet, but they've got to make themselves available by staying on side. Rodriguez, far side, too advanced. Not by much. He was trying to get back on side. The flag does not lie, however. Connor! Connor! Michael Miller in Michigan State in a 1-0 hole here. Trying to avoid a fifth consecutive loss to these Wolverines. Connor George is heading to the bench for Vadad Kovac, true freshman from Marietta, Georgia. And Buka and Reagan teaming up to try and win the ball for Michigan. Salah with the box out. Michigan wants a high kick. Michigan State wants a high kick, that is. I think they're going to get it. And I think they're going to get it, Chris. Yeah. Well, remember that Shaka Daly talked about how defending restarts is critical for Michigan. Let's see how they do against Jack Beck in this situation. Hey, Perry, come on. Hey, watch it when you play. Watch it. Wait, wait. Jackson Reagan able to get it out of the box for Michigan. And Beck slid into a Wolverine. Michigan wanted a foul. I don't think there was anything on this. Reagan, of course, is going to be at the end of every ball served into the box against Michigan. And Beck comes in a little bit late. He lost his footing. It, it looks horrible, but it was inadvertent. Glenn, Glenn, stay there for the moment. You know, everyone talks about Jackson Reagan Carlo, right there here, being 6'6 six, six hey, and how Carlo, much of an asset that is to him in the box and at the center back position. But you know, there he was still the first one on that ball, and, and he was crouching to get it. Well, that's
that's a good point. Credit the service. It was dropping quickly before before it entered the six. But he is every bit of on, a next Simon, level can you defender. Hold the ball for us? Or you talk about if um, some of these seniors don't come back for that bonus semester, if you will, that the NCAA is granting to uh, to athletes. Marky Barra leaves Ann Arbor, or maybe just at least leaves Michigan. Jackson Reagan leaves Michigan. I mean, those are two really big holes to fill for Shaka Daly. You're talking about the Big Ten midfielder and defender of the year. Uh, you know, and what would they have to what would they have to gain? You know, they wouldn't be necessarily missing. Oh, well, they'd be missing part of an MLS season, yes, but uh, that would all be hashed out in the case of Jackson Reagan, of course. But they're just trying to weigh the pros and cons of deciding whether to come back or not. Yeah, you could play your bonus semester, as you were saying, and then still have plenty of time to get ready for the 2022 MLS season. Buka knocked in the air. And after a ricochet off Morrell, Hunter Morris gathers. Chris, you talked about how uh, Damon Rensing mentioned maybe 60 minutes from uh, Farai Mutatu today. He's making the effort to slide into a, a, a service from the goalkeeper. He doesn't look like, he looks like he's got 160 minutes in the tank, not 60. <laughs> Perhaps an adrenaline boost from playing in the Big Ten tournament against your in-state rival. Perkins, can he get there? Farouk Osman wins the ball. Again. And Zuge dragged down by Tellez. Back falls as well. We're still playing. Too much weight on that through ball. Morse has it. Michigan gives up an opportunity there to build up just a little bit. But how about Michigan State? Jack Beck with the 70 yard service into the corner. If Michigan State's going to play direct, they have to play to the outside. You can't play direct into the middle of the park because Jackson Reagan is there to head that ball out and win it back for Michigan. Going inside. Michigan with the goal in the 54th minute by Buka. Here's Rodriguez. And the cross was taken away. Tellez got a leg on that feed, and Morris was all over it. Start deeper, you can come forward. Right? Tellez with no goals this year, but he's got his eye on frame, and he's all by himself, far post, as he makes that run. But how about Hunter Morris slamming that ball to the turf and making sure Michigan stays secure with just the one goal lead? Michigan State, Chance Brewing. That was a long-range blast from Kovac. Coach Damon Rensing said, we'd like it. We'll enjoy it when Kovac makes it onto the field. An entertaining player, great with the ball, as Connor Brazil makes his way onto the field in exchange for Dante Morissette. Brazil is a redshirt junior from Chesterfield, Michigan. A Louisville transfer. One of the players that Damon Rensing talked about, in-state Michigan product, went out of state to begin his college career and ended up returning to his home state to continue his college career. Tellez working past Brazil, and Nick Stone intercepted that 
entry feed. Well, in our other quarterfinal game in the Big Ten tournament going on right now, Rutgers and Maryland, we showed you some of the highlights in that game at halftime, and they have played through two overtimes, and it's penalty kicks to move on to the semifinal, Chris. Again, real tough to go to Maryland and win a game on the road at College Park. Coach Sasha Sarovsky has had issues with injuries all season long. He and the Terrapins find themselves at this point trying to get out of a shootout with Rutgers. Bit of a sassy wave from Ben Bender there on his penalty kick. So Shaka Daly has been asked by the referee to reposition the players who are warming up. Damon Rensing's got some feedback for the referee as well. <laughs> Talk about a, a thankless job. Yeah. Here's Marky Barra with the corner kick. And Luke Morrell got a header on it. Quinn Rogers was camped out at the top of the box, but that shot got muddied by traffic. And Zuge lofts the ball. Michigan wants a handball called on Jack Beck. They won't get it. Luis Sala dances into the box. A shot by Michael Miller just wide of the post. Well, this is great stuff as Sala has got the outside back and now the inside midfielder waiting for him to make a decision. He slices the ball between them and the opportunity it frames a good one for Michigan State and resulting in a corner kick. And it looks like Farai Mutatu is asking for a substitute for Michigan State. It's a good observation. Here's Miller with the entry and a scissors attempt by Morrell. Zuge couldn't get a shot away. And here is Iñaki Rodriguez. Wide pass. Can Buka track it down? Yes, with his knee. Michigan State thinks Pulselli is offsides, and they are right. Long ball from Beck down to Miller. Uh, 17 for 16. There goes Cameron Martin back onto the pitch for head coach Shaka Daly and Pulselli moments after the offside heads back. away by Mutatu. Numbers for Michigan State. It's Zuge. A weak shot and Finnerty watches it in. Well, Umar Farouk Osman was a midfielder when it came to Michigan. He's comfortable with the ball at his feet, but he got swarmed by three Spartans in the process and gave that one up. Unfortunately, Zuge was not able to get his footing. It's not a great effort. It's certainly easy for Finnerty to pick up. In those situations, you really you want that solid crack at goal. I was expecting Kovac to give it back to Mutatu there, Chris. Yeah. There was a shove, meanwhile, on the other end of the field. Get off the ball, says Nick Stone. No love lost. Perkins centers. Stand up, Looking for Mutatu. And a good defensive play made there by Jens Hoff, the freshman, making not just the first start of his career, but just the second appearance this season. And Michigan State has gone at him in this game, and he has passed the test so far. Hey! Austin, he's got to make sure he has good cover! Carlos, stop off. He's good! Olu Ogunwale back on the field. He's on the ball now for Michigan State, number 14. Stay on it. 
still Michigan State ball. Farai Mutatu. Perkins. Miller still on it. And a scissors attempt by Mutatu was wide. Well, a lot happening here. Ball in from Perkins, settled by Miller. Oh, thought he was going to pull the trigger there. He decides instead to wait. Blocked by Reagan. Second effort by Farai Mutatu off target. That was an accidental block by Jackson Reagan. His back was to goal there, and he just got beamed. Corner kick earned for Michigan State. And it's Jack Beck to take it, the junior from DeWitt. Hey. Hey. Go ahead, go ahead, boy, boy. Miller. It was taken away by Quinn Rogers of Michigan, and now Rodriguez is on it. In the direction of the speedy Kevin Buka. Buka slams on the brakes. He's working on Connor Brazil right now for Michigan State. In the box. Martin was there, but so was Luke Morrell, and the flag goes up. Morrell is injured outside of the six right now, and Rutgers, as we Shift our attention back to the 4-5 matchup. Has a chance to win in penalty kicks. It is 4-4 going into the sixth round of Rutgers, Maryland, as you see on the right side of your screen. And we will check on Luke Morell in just a moment, but here's a big-time kick for Rutgers, and what a save by Maryland. All the drama. A Big Ten quarterfinal Saturday. We've already seen Penn State punch its ticket to the semifinal with a 3-1 win over Ohio State. This 4-5 matchup on the right going on between Maryland and Rutgers has not disappointed. Neither has our match between Michigan and Michigan State. We thought this was going to be close. Not just because of the rivalry dynamic, but also because of Michigan State and the way they ended their season. And you just saw a walk-off for Maryland as they are through to the semifinal after a win in penalty kicks against Rutgers. Well, big ups to uh, Jim McKeldry and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. What a season. And to take Maryland on the road all the way to... Extra penalty kicks only to be disappointed. It's just phenomenal. Rutgers coming back into the picture there. And let's take a look at what happened to Luke Morell in our game, number three in white. Morell goes down to challenge for this ball and make the clearance. The contact from Michigan. Cameron Martin making the hard run to the near post. Morell is hopefully okay for Michigan State and able to re-enter. He is a physical player for Michigan State. Again, as Chris Doran mentioned, a guy who's watched this rivalry from afar when he began his college career with Oakland. And now Dante Morris set back onto the field for Michigan State in Morell's absence. Lamar, get over. Mutatu got a shot away from behind Jackson Reagan and then collided with Owen Finnerty. Both players shaken up. We're going to see the trainers again. Can't believe Mutatu got a shot off and was as high as he was. Well, again, we talk about how, as a goalkeeper, you make the commitment to come out, you've got to win it. And Jackson Reagan is shielding Mutatu, but Mutatu, as you mentioned, gets the opportunity. Well, it's, a, it's awkward contact for everybody concerned. Well, it looks like both players are back on their feet. And so after just watching that penalty kick winner by Maryland, let's take a look at the updated Big Ten tournament bracket presented by Discover. Maryland awaits the winner of Indiana Northwestern. That's the nightcap of our quarterfinal match today. You can catch that game with Dean Linke and Chris Monroe at 6 o'clock Central time on the Big Ten Network. 
And Michigan, Michigan State, the winner of this game, will move on to play Penn State in Wednesday's semifinal. Tell you what, the way this game is going, <laughs> hopefully both teams will be in good enough shape to contend in the semifinal. This has been a really physical game. Certainly not short on entertainment value. We have two of the best goalkeepers in the league in this match. There's no surprise that the both of them have come up big in certain situations. Michigan with the slim lead right now and plenty of soccer to play. Morris had 13 saves in the regular season. Finnerty with 16. Connor Brazil. Jack Beck tried to win the ball back for Michigan State. After a couple of ricochets, here's Nick Stone, a defender very capable of playing forward. Farai Mutatsu now winds up looking for Olu Ogunwale, who smacks the post in disdain. They just did not make the connection. I love Ogunwale's run. Look, he's starting from the center circle. He knows he's going to get service from Matatu. He puts himself right between the center back and the outside back and can't connect. That's really great awareness from Ogunwale. Terrific service from Mutatu. Did he start his jump just a little late? That was so close. Just imagine if he's on the far post in that run, instead yep. of making the hard run to the middle, make a lighter run to the outside post. So if you're running to the near post, it's got to be a hard run, middle, a little less hard, and then the outside, take your time. Mutatu fighting in, and Finnerty got some gloves on it. Who was dissatisfied for Michigan's defense there? That's the goalkeeper, Owen Finnerty. Michael Miller with a cross. And then Morissette collides with a Michigan player, and he's down. You see the spirit of the man who has started more than 65 games for the Wolverines. Marky Barra, after this corner kick, results in plenty of contact inside the six. It's Ibarra and Morissette getting tangled in the battle for the ball out of the air. Look at him, he's getting up. This is, this is strong gamesmanship from a guy who's seen a lot of games in the Big Ten and in D1 soccer. Awfully fun to watch this one with you, Chris. This has been a great soccer match. Michigan State doubling up Michigan in corner kicks. But it's Michigan, courtesy of a 54th minute goal by Kevin Buka, that leads one to nothing. <laughs> Good throw goes to Mutatu. Here's Ogunwale. Foul was called. The assistant referee made the call. Yeah. The assistant referee made the call and promptly got several negative Yelp reviews from the players in Maze and Blue. It's going to hurt his uh, Google rating. Back, and it goes! What a shot! What a save by Finnerty! Boy, you know he's got the left foot, but when he puts it on frame and forces Finnerty into the save, what an opportunity for Beck, and what a big-time play for one of the top goalkeepers in the league, Owen Finnerty. Our Big Ten standout brought to you by Auto Owners Insurance. And before the corner kick, Austin Swike down in goal. Finnerty and Ogunwale are jawing right now. 
That was just a fantastic effort by Finnerty, who collided with the post on the come down. And look at, you've been saying this, Chris, two of the top goalies in our game today, both among the best in the Big Ten in goals against average. And I think in the absence of Joel Harrison, Owen Finnerty has become quite the, the voice of reason back there for the Wolverines. The Miller corner was low. Beck races to it for Michigan State. Perkins with a re-entry and Reagan with the chip into the air. Michigan's corner kick defense much improved after some issues in the regular season finale against Wisconsin. Here's Nick Stone with the throw in. A little long, and Farouk Osman boots it back and offside. One of the other changes I think we've seen are adjustments or tweaks, whatever you want to call it, in the second half is that Marky Barra is really pressing forward just a little bit higher in the attacking half of the field for Michigan. Uh, it's starting to look like a two-front system, but it's it's really not. It's just that Ibarra's got so much in the engine that he's able to get forward and really press the back line of Michigan State. What have you thought of Ibarra's performance today? You know, I think the game sometimes dictates different things. is not a guy who's going to show up on the score sheet. He's the guy who connects the back to the front. Um, but he's the spiritual leader for the Maze and Blue. And so it's really important for him to show in his play and in his voice the kind of confidence the Wolverines need to get through a game like this. Tellez stretching it wide. Swike right to the foot of Zuge of Michigan State. Zuge around Swike. And a, another call made by the assistant referee there on the other side of the field. Free kick, Dante Morissette. Fouls were even in the first half, for much of the first half anyway. Michigan tough, with tough. now 14 fouls to Michigan State's Get eight. Underneath them, underneath them, underneath them. Ogun Wally with a touch Ogun around Ogun Farouk Ogun Osman. Ogun. And then Mutatu almost got rolled up on Osman from behind. Wow. That... That looked like contact that was incidental. Ogan Wally does well to get away from the traffic. And that's, I mean, that's really Mutatu running over Umar Farouk Osman. That should be Michigan ball coming out. I mean, it could be. It's not. That's right, and instead it's a gorgeous free kick opportunity for the dangerous Jack Beck, who almost put one in from a similar spot minutes ago. Oh, Infinity made a sensational save. With the left, and it was headed out brilliantly by the freshman, Quinn Rogers. It never even got to Finnerty. Another corner, however, for Michigan State. Lewis Sala checks back into the game for Jack Zuge. And here is Jack Beck on the corner. Back to the top of the 18. All the way to Morris, who's almost at midfield. One of you, one of you! I got it, I got it. Center. 
We got the drums from the Ultras who are in the stands today. Family and friends for both teams sitting in the middle. And as Shaka Daly told us yesterday, the fans will uh, are have been admitted, including the Ultras, the supporters group for the Wolverine soccer program. That's great to see, great to hear. Provide such an addition to the college soccer environment. Home games were few and far between for Michigan because of the postponed 2020 fall season. It's almost 500 days between home matches for Michigan at its home facility. And then when the regular season started this winter, their first several home scheduled matches were played in Brighton, Michigan at an indoor complex. Not the foul. Not the foul. We're still playing through some contact, Chris. Brazil saves it for Michigan State. There's the drum sounding in. Tatu has been a warrior today for Michigan State. And Reagan clears it away for Michigan. Jens Hoff kicked. Getting his first start today. Jens Hoff goes out 1v1 versus Mutatu. Looks like he's dealing with uh, maybe a cramp. Yeah, interesting. It, it's 75 degrees overcast, but very warm. Brazil plays it in and a save out of midair by Finnerty. Look at the hands on the sophomore goalkeeper. There are always situations in a game where you depend on the goalkeeper to make big time plays and that is a big time play that will not show up on a stat sheet it is not a shot so it's not a save but he denied any opportunity for the spartans to level this game i don't know if jim harbaugh needs any wide receivers finnerty at 6 2 he's got some height he does and he's got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder doesn't he i mean he, he doesn't look like the typical happy-go-lucky goalkeeper no. that, uh, you know, is sometimes a little odd. They've got a great sense of humor, and they don't mind being the outcast. Owen Finnerty plays like a warrior. He's got a twin brother who also plays college soccer. His dad was a goalkeeper at San Diego State and then played professional indoor soccer in Detroit. I, I, know, I know what you're saying. I think in that case, he's got three saves today. None more bigger than this one from earlier in the second half. Uh, this was huge with Jack Beck from the outside feigning the cross and going right to frame. And Finnerty comes up big with the touch ball over the crossbar. It was just a good soccer play. It was a beautiful ball by Beck and a phenomenal save by Finnerty. Inside of five minutes now, Hunter Morris with the goal kick. Michael Miller. And a shot blocked by Swike. Brazil. Good. Swike. Grabs it and kicks it up ahead. Good defense by Swike. Now the other way, Pulselli back into the game and a save by Morse to keep Michigan State alive. Ibarra guarded by Stone. Played wide to Umar Farouk Osman. Guarded by Ogun Wale. Michigan wants a foul. And they're not going to get it. 
Well, it's good gamesmanship from both Michigan players. One side Ibarra, this side Umar Farouk Osman, who's going to the corner flag. Hogan Wally with the shove. Not much of a shove, Chris. It wasn't, but... Poor Farouk Os Omar Farouk Osman. I mean, he's only 5'9". And Ogan Wally playing with the spirit of a team that's down a goal at their arch enemy's stadium. You know, however it was called, one team was going to be vociferously upset. And Brazil can't keep it in play for Michigan State. Does Michigan State have a final gasp? Or will Michigan close out? and move on to the semifinal. Penn State awaits on Wednesday. Cramping might be coming an issue here as Luis Sala is down for Michigan State. This is how he got to the 1-0 score, Chris. Kevin Buka in the 54th minute. Yeah, great stuff on the outside as Swike is able to get possession and then finds Buka right at the top of the 18. Sending in touch around the defender, finds the space far post and celebrates. He is lethal. The Spartan assassin is what he is. Yes. Three goals against the Spartans this year. Two of them game winners. Could it be a third? He is a really interesting story, Chris. He arrived to the program as a preferred walk-on. Barely played as a freshman, became a spot starter as a sophomore. Now as a junior, they haven't been able to take him off the field. And the official is getting it from both directions. Shaka Daly, you see right there for Michigan, and Damon Rensing for Michigan State. Off the deflection. Perkins outraces Buka to the ball. Michigan State's got to get forward in a hurry, Chris, but Michigan's defense is clapping down. Something we love to see a crowd getting into it at a Big Ten soccer game. Whipped in and kicked out. And Shaka Daly is going to get a yellow card. With a little over 90 seconds left. Been a thrilling game. We're in for a thrilling finish. Morissette tries to dial up Brazil, who gets turned around and lost the ball, and it gives Cameron Martin time to play it back. But out of bounds. Boy, generous throw-in position there. Michigan State has to hold its horses. They do eventually get it in. And we'll try again here as we approach the final minute. One minute to tie for Michigan State, an extended season. Carlos, where you going, Carlos? Michigan is fine as long as the ball remains in the midfield. Stone plays it back to Morse. Roll too far out in front. 30 seconds left. Cameron Martin more than happy to just sit on the ball. Because I was trying to play him in. 
out of bounds with 15 seconds left. 10 seconds left, and Michigan feels it now. A very hard-fought battle between Michigan State and Michigan today. The Spartans challenge, but Michigan, as they've done now three times this season, and for the second straight Big Ten tournament, beats its in-state arch rival. Two really great programs, both having to deal with the pandemic, the COVID protocol, the players, the athletes put everything into this game, the extension of the season to Michigan. I really felt like Michigan State did a great job throughout. It's, uh, it's, it's going to be a fun week, I'll tell you that. Off to a great start, and Kevin Buka has been a mayhem wreaker for Michigan against Michigan State. Three goals, all against the Spartans. What do you think of Michigan's chances in that battle against Penn State now, Chris? Well, it's the game I wanted to see all season long. It was canceled during the regular season. I'm watching that matchup on Wednesday. <laughs> it's going to be a great one. Mark your calendars. It'll be right here on the Big Ten Network. Michigan victorious on this Big Ten quarterfinal Saturday. 1-0 over Michigan State. We'll wrap things up from Ann Arbor when we return from the pitch. Wolverines victorious against the Spartans. Hail to the victors. They're wearing maize and blue today. The conquering heroes. One to nothing over Michigan State as Michigan punches its ticket to the Big Ten Tournament semifinal. This was a great soccer game from minute zero through 90, Chris. But in the 54th minute, Michigan scored what proved to be the game-winning goal. Dante Morissette loses his feet. Austin Swike takes control. Ball forward to... Kevin Buka to finish this play up. Great strike by Buka. Touch around the defender. And the opportunity to plant the game winner in the far corner. He's got three goals this year. All three game winning goals against Michigan State. Now tell me about this save by Owen Finnerty, the play of the game, really. Beck has been serving the ball to targets all afternoon and finally decides to go to frame, but Owen Finnerty reads that ball and pops it over the crossbar. Terrific effort by Finnerty. Just an outstanding play by the sophomore goalkeeper to preserve that 1-0 lead for Michigan.